Right, I've got a few more things to show you from Steve from the nuclear family. Um, and this will basically wrap up the videos for the time being of sort of stuff he's given to me to do videos on and all that. So obviously if you're wanting other content, I'll make sure I do some of that soon. So, um, you know, it's not just like one sort of person providing stuff just out of, you know, fairness and all that. And because if you're not really into gas mask stuff, you might not find this interesting. I know a lot of people are, so subscribers subscribe to the channel. But anyway, so we'll start off with the good things. And then we'll move on to a truly atrocious mask in a minute, um, which is worth looking at. So, he gave me this the other day when he gave me some of the other stuff. And this is basically a US Universal gas hood. A bit, you know, like the M17 hood, but it's designed to fit most masks as opposed to just, for example, one particular mask. So that's cool. So that's mine to have anyway, that one, which is good. And he also gave me this to sort of do a video on, but not keep, which is... The manual, which is obviously all in German, for the PAPR system. Um, you know, the one that I was doing the video on, the German one. So, if that shows up alright with the lighting, you can recognise it from that. So, I'm not going to Google Translate all of this, but I will have a look at the pictures a bit later, properly, before I um, you know, go through it. But it's all basically the instruction manual slash service log, I imagine, for it. So, speaking of that German thing, this is apparently the device they use to um, open the battery pack. Um, so, basically it's just something that grips and you twist with it. Um, so, again, for most people you could probably undo it fine with your hands, but I'm assuming this is if it was in maybe cold weather, or we've got all the NBC gear on and you can't grip them very well, or you've got an injury and can't grip them very well. That's what this is for, but this is it's literally just basically a belt thing you put around the battery compartment and then you know pull pull this bit tight to um tighten it around there and then just you know twist it off so i've seen little versions of this for jam jar lids for people who are like too weak to open jam jars so in theory i guess that could also do that but that's basically what that is on a bigger scale um but you know for somebody like me there's not much use in it but it's an interesting thing right the cool thing to show you is the thing is 3d printed so Here's the um, Avon sort of blanking plug, the one they use on like the C50 and the FM53, maybe the FM54. And basically the proper Avon tools are like that and they're apparently quite expensive to buy the proper Avon tools. Because it's kind of been done in a proprietary way where you know you need the specialist tool to take the blanking plug out. I guess it's so soldiers can't be dumb and do it in the field and maybe um, gas themselves, that's my only thought maybe. Or you know make a proprietary thing and you can charge more money for it. So that's that, that's the official Avon one, but he's started 3D printing his own ones, so there you go, that fits in, and then this would do the same job. It actually makes a tighter fit this one than the um, official Avon one does. So, yeah, his one would actually probably turn it a bit more efficiently, because it has a better grip on it, because for example with his one you can do that, where I don't think the Avon one would work like that, let's have a look. Yeah, it doesn't. So that, that's good to know. The one he's 3D printed and that is actually a slightly better size fit. But anyway, let's get on to the main thing some of you will be interested in the video. So this isn't mine to keep, but this is one of the awful Chinese 4A1 copies. Or the Chinese clone of the Draeger Simplex. Um, so, right, we'll start with the history of it. Sadly, I don't have my 4A1 to hand, otherwise I'd do a direct comparison, but you'll see quite quickly why this is much worse than the 4A1. So, the Draeger Simplex was basically either licensed, copied, or cloned by Israel to make the 4A1 civilian mask. Um, you know, the Israeli civilian mask is what most people know it as. Um, and it's, it turns out China have also started doing their own clone of it. But, in Chinese standards, it's not actually very well built, um, you know, compared to some of the Chinese stuff. So, I have a feeling one of the buckles was apparently broken on it. Um, I can't remember which one it actually was, but... Just seeing if I can actually spot the um, broken buckle off the top of my head, but the straps certainly don't look like they'd, um, you know, work very well. They're a bit like the pewter straps, as in they're a bit better than the pewter ones, but they're a very similar design, as in they're just going to ping off with too much pressure on the mask, which isn't good if you put a mask on quickly, you know, and want to do it up. So it does have a neck strap at least. Um, but as you can see, the mask itself is a pretty flimsy um, sort of rubber. Um, you probably don't want a mask to bend that much. 
Also, actually looking at that, doesn't look like it's got a peripheral seal in it. Um, which is never a good thing, really, because it means that the mask is less likely to fit your face. However, I think the main complaint Steve had of it was one of the valves. Now, let's see if I can spot which one it is. It might be that one, but basically, the valves on this don't sit close to the mask, which isn't a good thing, because that means they let air through, especially if it's the XL valve doing it. Because, obviously, if your XL valve is loose, um, that means that... I wonder if I can get the... Um, there we go. Get a little plastic cover off, but yeah, that that's that's not very good. Um, basically, your exhale valve, you know, doesn't sit very tight to the mask. It's hard to show that at the correct angle, but this bit is basically, yeah, and it, it's just come off in my hand like that. So it's got a tiny little umbrella valve. But it's not one that sits very well on the mask. So let's push that back in, and yeah, that's. So you know, the whole point of a respirator with the valves on it. The intake valve isn't as important, but obviously it's needed when you've got a filter on there to stop the mask fogging up, because it means the air has to go out the XL valve port, not back through the filter. The The main worrying thing, there's also no O-ring in there, I've just noticed. There's like a bit of a rubber pad there, but that's actually the um, bit the valve sits on, so it's not really got an O-ring in there to make the filters fit well. And... Um, yeah, the XL valve is basically, if, if that's not tight enough, the whole mask doesn't work because it basically means the air will come in through the XL valve port. Um, so yeah, not, not a good sign. I'm not even going to attempt to have a look at the drinking tube. I'll have a look at the port, but um, let's see if I can get this bit back on. Out of comparing this to the pewter, this is still probably better than the pewter mask. I was going to get them out side by side to see which is worse, but this is still better than the pewter easily. Um, and there you've got, um, obviously a drinking tube connector, looks the same as the Israeli one. Does it look the same on the inside? So like I said, most of the mask doesn't look the same on the inside. Um, yeah, it's a pretty similar looking drinking tube sort of system. Obviously, this doesn't have a voice diaphragm either, as far as I can tell. There is like a grate in there, but that's, that's not really going to act as a proper voice diaphragm from what I can tell. Because, you know, the... If the XL valve is there, and the essentially that's just the intake valve, isn't it? They've just that's just the cover they've put on the intake valve. So um, yeah, that's that. So the only good thing I can say about it is it does come with um, maybe some like lens protector things already on it. Um, but yeah, f for all intents and purposes, this is basically the Israeli civilian mask, but not made very well um, with some of the valves changed, you know, for cheapness reasons. Also, the oral nasal cup feels really stiff in the sense that it would pinch your nose quite a bit, I imagine, or just not mould your nose very well if you don't have the exact right size for it. Right, so, um, what can I say about this other than the fact that obviously it's not very good? Now, the more interesting thing is probably just to mention the fact that these are, I believe, these are masks that get sold as those, like, King or KYNG tactical masks, as in, um... I'm trying to think of the word, like, so basically, it's, I think on places like Amazon, there's a company that's a bit like Myra, where they essentially stick their name on masks they didn't design. But unlike Myra, who at least do it on, like, Czech military masks, other than the baby coffins, you know, and the Czech military masks are right, it's just they're very overpriced from Myra, and Myra don't make them, they stick their name on them, but they've obviously got the rights to do it. Um... The King Company, whatever they're called, are literally just doing it with chinese clones of um, Israeli masks. So, sometimes you'll actually see one of these for more than a second-hand Israeli mask. And, for your money, get a good condition second-hand Israeli mask if you're going to do that. Just because, yeah. I mean, I can't really notice which strap was broken. It might be I'm just being dumb and not noticing it. Um... But I certainly wouldn't trust these straps because they definitely remind me of the, um, what was it, the um, pewter. They look a bit better than the pewter, but looking at them, you know, they're still not going to be very good. I could actually see while it's in use that bit of plastic probably breaking there um, on any of the straps because that doesn't look very, you know, sturdy plastic. And as I said, it, this has a very similar problem actually, I was, was going to say, just looking at it, to the... Um, Pewter in the sense that the soft rubber this is made from, um, when you have the weight of a filter on it, it's going to do that. 
um, which is not really a good thing. So anyway, thanks again to Steve and Nuclear Family and his wife Amy for, you know, letting me keep some of the stuff and um, some of the stuff, you know, just to borrow to do videos, because obviously if people lend me stuff to do videos, it means I don't have to spend my money on it, which I can, you know, use for saving up or whatever else, something really cool. Um, and of course it means it doesn't take up space in the house, which is a big problem, as you can tell how messy it is from the background of the streams when you have to keep, you know, like trying to find space for stuff or get stuff down and people say, oh, can I see that on the stream? And then it never gets put back neatly. So there you go. Um, obviously, so my recommendation is just from seeing this, don't get one of these. Like even if you got one that came in perfect condition, um, you know, I don't really, <laughs> don't think it's really trustworthy. Like, especially the valves, there's also some like marks on the rubber there, like where it's not been formed properly. It's a bit worrying. Um, yeah, all in all, I don't think this would be very good, and that's like not even getting into how the lens is fitting, maybe there's problems with that and whatever else, but, you know, with with all of this, um, yeah, so f assuming this is the exact same 4A1 clone that the King Tactical ones are, uh, I'd avoid it like the plague if I was you, especially if they're charging like 30, 40 dollars or euros, you know, up, pound sterling up for them, because... Yeah, if, if you want to get Chinese masks, the good Chinese masks, other than some of the sort of industrial ones, which are like the proper ones, but I never know the names of them, are basically the military ones or the military ones sold for export. So as in the FMJ05 on some models, which is the MF11, um, the MF12 or whatever it is, which is the um, sort of S10 copy, um, that's the FMJ08, that's pretty good. And there's also the fairly nice MF11D, which is that, the FMJ09, which is basically, you know, a good high quality, um, you know, very good panoramic mask, but um, you also from China get stuff like this, which, um, you know, if you relied on it, you'd probably end up dead, but there you go. So, for all accounts and purposes, I'd rather wear a GP5 than this, but bear in mind, obviously, um, oh, apparently that's another thing, this is apparently Ghost, even though they claim it's NATO, so I haven't tried screwing a filter in to check that, but... I'll take Steve's word for that, because I have had Chinese industrial masks before where they just do not take NATO filters. And considering this does not have a proper O-ring in there, even if you put a Goss filter in, it might not make a good seal. So, there you go. What else is there to say about this mask other than, you know, it looks pretty dreadful. If you just wanted it for a costume thing and you could get one cheap, then sure, go for it. But compared to the proper Israeli civilian masks, you know, you can tell this is cheap and horrible. Wouldn't surprise me if these are actually made from a lot of the same bits they make the bong masks from, because if you've seen the bong masks, um, they're not actually proper 4A1s, because a lot of people seem to think they're 4A1s and somebody's ripped the, um, you know, like, filter out and put a bong in it or whatever. What they actually are is, like, a cheap rubber mould of a 4A1. Um, so, it might even be that these are made from the same rubber as that, and then they thought, oh, why not, why not sell those bong masks actually as a functioning gas mask? Yeah, um, so, there you go.